Hamilton still on water and climate. Predictions of bigger storm fronts and massive swells due to global warming are an understandable concern for most people, but it's all grist for the mill for a hardcore group of surfers who travel the world looking for the biggest breaks. They risk life and limb to take on the big waves and surf companies and sponsors are clamouring to be associated with the extreme sport. One of the hottest spots is a reef off Western Australia's south coast. Hamish Fitzsimmons reports. There are more sedate ways to spend a Saturday afternoon, but for the select few surfers who chase the world's biggest waves, getting cleaned up by one of these aquatic monsters is another day at the office. I would imagine being like getting hit by the wallabies or something all at once. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's really violent. Throws you around like the forces, you just feel like your legs and arms are going to come off. But it's, um, I mean, the, the trick is to try and enjoy that as well. Today, the Big Wave Roadshow has rolled into the quiet coastal village of Gracetown in Western Australia's southwest. Lured by the adrenaline buzz and big dollars if they ride the world's largest wave, this group includes two-time world champion Tom Carroll and big wave surfer Ross Clark Jones. Over the last two decades, Clark Jones has tackled some of the biggest and ugliest surf on the planet. The surfers have flown in from around the world, hoping to ride mountains of water. Waves of up to 70 feet high have been predicted at a reef two kilometres offshore, accessible only by boat or jet ski, and the most stout-hearted of surfers. So what possesses someone to take their life into their own hands every time they go surfing? Yeah, it's the, the rush, the extreme, the old cliche things. It's, I mean, it is though. It's, I mean, it's, it's something so rare too, that a big wave, that it doesn't happen every day. It's, it feels like it's an achievement. You actually, it's like, I don't know, like climbing Everest or something. You're putting your life at risk, but it's something that you love doing. So all you're doing is living, really. It's living on the edge though, because on waves of this size, one mistake could be the difference between glory and disaster. Good luck. Get out of here, bro. Get out of here. Near-death experiences are part and parcel of the job. The point of uh, drowning, I mean, I've got there quite a few times where it's, you have go through the panic stage, it's like this is way too long to be underwater, I'm out of breath, and your mind starts slowing right down. And it's a very calm, nice feeling. And I, I, I understand why they say drowning is the best way to go. If Ross Clark Jones is big wave surfing's elder statesman, then 24-year-old Hawaiian Ian Walsh is its grommet. He's decided to forego the world of competitions and, inspired by people like Ross Clark Jones, spend his career hunting big waves, often at the drop of a hat. If I'm somewhere and the big swell's going, I'll drop my life and pick up and go to that swell. That part of the surfing is so so different from everything I thought I would have. It's like I can literally be on the other side of the world and be there in two days and ready to go. Big wave surfing is also attracting a lot of attention and big money. Major surf companies pay up to $70,000 each year to the rider of the biggest wave and sponsors are keen to throw money at this, one of the most extreme sports. Here we go. Oh my God. Which means finding bigger and bigger waves has become something of a science, which embraces all technology at hand as part of the never-ending search. We use a lot of really complex weather data and there's a lot of weather models that we um, you know, plug algorithms into and you know, to create our predictions. I do a lot of manual forecasting as well, you know, pull out the calculator and punch in the numbers. This time the surfers have brought their own weatherman, meteorologist turned surf soothsayer Ben Matson, who's more than aware what sort of competition there is in the big wave arena. The surfers themselves, I mean, the difference between, you know, a front cover shot and perhaps, you know, a little inset at the back of a magazine, you know, that, that difference can be um, determined just by swing in the wind direction or, you know, a different tide. Though Western Australia failed to live up to expectations this time, there's always another swell. The next stop is the cold, dark waters of Bass Strait, where the big wave team will try and find the fabled and as yet unridden peak, which for surfers doesn't get any better. I think the, the adventure side and the discovery of a new place is what keeps me going. To each his own. Hamish Fitzsimmons with that report.